Bye. I remember seeing the menthol cigarette ads, talking about how they were fresh and soothing. Here's my tip. Smoking any type of cigarette can cause a stroke. And there's nothing soothing about that. Menthol cigarettes are just as damaging as other cigarettes. You can quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW for help getting free medication. A little bit of a loss for words right now. Tomorrow on E.T., Dr. Dre gets his flowers and his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. About time, right? I was today years old when I realized he didn't have one. Goodness. Sorry, All right, well, we leave you now with sweet moments from Zin. Happening now. We've been following the trial, and now the verdict is in for the man accused of torturing and killing a five-year-old girl. We're live at the courthouse with the jury's decision. And a local man in the hospital, but police say he is no victim. We're going to tell you how he could end up facing criminal charges. Warming up later this week, and we have one shot at rain to talk about. I'll time that out for you and get into more details in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, justice in the name of a little five-year-old girl. After five days of testimony, a jury found Jose Ruiz guilty in the death of five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. Lasoya beaten to death back in February of 2022 by Ruiz and allegedly her mother. Erica Hernandez has been following this trial since it began last week. She's joining us live from the Justice Center. Erica, a quick verdict from that jury today. They deliberated for about 45 minutes. Was he found guilty on all counts? And did he give any kind of reaction in the courtroom? Yeah, Steve, there was no reaction from Ruiz. As those verdicts were read, it was eight counts guilty on all counts, seven counts of injury to a child and one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, before those verdicts were read, the jury went out for deliberations. Each side was given one last time to make their case. The defense saying that Ruiz wasn't the cause of Mercedes's death, and they put the blame on her mother, Katrina Mendoza, CPS and SAPD. But the state saying they weren't on trial and Ruiz was. They told the jury there was more than enough evidence to prove Ruiz was guilty. In making that little girl's life hell the last two weeks. And we ask, just like defense said, let's vindicate her. Please find Jose Ruiz guilty of all counts. So next up is the punishment phase. Reese is facing up to life in prison. That punishment phase already underway. The state has put up three witnesses, one of them uh, Mercedes's great grandmother who now has um, adopted Mercedes's older sister. Now, as far as when those deliberations for sentencing, that could take place this evening or tomorrow morning. Make sure to stay with KSAT 12 as we update you on that. And we're also live streaming this trial. You can watch on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and KSAT's YouTube channel. Live at the Kidana Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. A controversial Texas Senate bill on immigration won't be going into effect today after a last minute order extended by the Supreme Court. Texas lawmakers passed SB4 last year and it would give state law enforcement agencies the power to arrest, jail and prosecute anybody they suspected crossed into the U.S. illegally. It's something Governor Greg Abbott has long had as a top priority, but it's faced numerous lawsuits and challenges, even from the Department of Justice itself. Now, Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito extended that pause last week. He did the same thing today, just before the clock struck four, which is when the bill would have taken effect here in Texas. That temporary pause last week lasted just a week. The new pause will be indefinite until the Supreme Court can come to a ruling on that bill. It was a weekend getaway gone wrong. A 45 year old Texas woman happy to be alive days after Gillespie County deputies say she shot and killed a man she had planned a weekend trip with. He apparently tried to kidnap her. That woman called deputies just before one last Friday afternoon on the phone. She described she had been drugged and kidnapped, then told deputies she shot him. They later found the car they were in on the side of Highway 290 just east of Fredericksburg. The man found dead in the front seat. The woman taken to a hospital. It is unclear tonight if she'll face any charges. All right, forget candid camera. This could be called a crime cam. On Saturday night, we showed you this video. 
from a doorbell camera of a man trying to break into a West Side home. He ran off after he realized people were inside and Bear County deputies circulated this video trying to find it. Well, they did. Today, they arrested 21 year old Sebastian Beltran. He char he's charged with burglary, but the case not closed yet. They believe another suspect was with him acting as a lookout on the street nearby. If you know anything that could help deputies, give them a call 335 6000. A man who's being treated for a gunshot wound at a local hospital could have even more trouble on his hands tonight. San Antonio police say he may be facing charges in connection with his own shooting. As Katrina Weber reports, police say it stems from a domestic dispute. Even before 8 this morning, it was already too late to stop the violence inside this home. San Antonio police say several calls about a shooting are what drew them to Vigil View Street near Nacogdoches and Judson Roads. Inside the home, they say they found a man in his late 30s with a gunshot wound in his upper body. Police say witnesses told them he had been involved in a dispute with a woman. When another man intervened, they say it turned physical, ultimately ending with a gun going off somehow. The man who was shot was rushed to a hospital by ambulance. Police questioned several people in this house, but they say so far they all appear to be either witnesses or victims. They say the suspect, if anyone, is the man in the hospital because they believe he brought the gun into the situation. Investigators, meanwhile, took photos of the other man, focusing on injuries which they say he suffered as a victim. Police are labeling the shooting as a domestic dispute. They say everyone involved in this case lives in the home where it happened. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Remember that cold weather in January that forced the San Antonio Independent School District to temporarily shut down its campuses? Well, internal records now obtained by KSAT investigate show district leadership blamed many of the issues on boilers not being set to run around the clock. Superintendent Dr. Jaime Aquino actually told the media that week that human error also contributed to the problems at the district a district that has a number of aging school buildings. In the spirit of transparency, last year I did increase the budget allocation to enhance building maintenance. Did you notice he said transparency? Well, coming up at six o'clock, we're going to take a closer look at the district's level of transparency following those cold weather closures. We're looking for answers. What it took for KSAT to finally get records about what went wrong. All right, looking at the radar out there right now, we've got a little bit of activity, but not much to speak of in general. Just a few little sprinkles out there here and there, and uh, overall, it's just mainly cloud cover that we have overhead, but a few sprinkles could lead uh, to some just light light showers to talk about. Let's go full screen. Take a look at our conditions out there. 55 this morning, 65 for the afternoon high, not a big temperature spread out there today where we're feeling the cool temperatures unseasonably cool really taking a look at our weather watchers mostly right now in the 60s. We will eventually get to the 80s and we've got a shot at rain as we transition to some slightly warmer air. We'll talk about it in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Let's go to I 37 and Jones near downtown right now to check out the traffic situation and it's a busy Monday. You can see traffic very slow going again. This is I 37 at Jones Avenue. A bit of a backup there. Not all that unusual though for this time of day. Now let's talk about road closures. Now two massive downtown closures started today and they will be a headache. Alamo Street will be cut down to a one way road for about a year for construction in that area. The northbound lanes of South Alamo between Market Street and Cesar Chavez will be closed through the completion of the project. That means the southbound lanes will be the only open portion of the road. Not far away from that closure is the other project starting today. All lanes of a small stretch of Santa Rosa near Nueva Street downtown will be closed until the summer. The road is closing for construction. It will affect Santa Rosa from Cesar Chavez up to Dolorosa. So you can scan this QR code on your screen for an in-depth map of the closures and a breakdown of detours to get around all this. Now to a tragic story out of Houston, a one year old toddler dead after being hit by an Uber driver that had just dropped her and her family off at their home. Harris County deputies say the driver didn't see the little girl in front of his car as he pulled away from the apartment complex the family lived at. That Uber driver pulled from his vehicle, then assaulted by the little girl's family members, according to deputies. 
That driver now recovering in the hospital. No charges have been filed. President Joe Biden and his really Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke for the first time in more than a month today, and it couldn't come in a more tense time. The White House says the leaders talked over the phone about the importance of getting more aid into Gaza and the status of the Israeli invasion into Gaza, specifically the area of Rafah, where more than a million Palestinians are sheltering. The call comes days after Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for an election in Israel. That could threaten Netanyahu's, Netanyahu's position, an idea President Biden, Biden, by the way, supports. And speaking of the president, he signed an executive order, which the White House says is the most comprehensive action ever taken to advance women's health. Meanwhile, Donald Trump's campaign is doing cleanup after the former president's dark comments this weekend, where he said there would be a, quote, bloodbath, end quote, if he's not elected. ABC's M. Wynn has more on the race for the White House. President Joe Biden touting new executive action to advance the federal government's research into women's health. To state the obvious, women are half the population underrepresented across the board, but not in my administration. The president is ordering federal agencies to collect more data on women's health, from heart disease to midlife conditions like menopause and arthritis, adding $200 million to fund new research. Officials say medical research has focused on men for far too long, leaving women out. The president is also pressing Congress to approve $12 billion in funding for women's health. As the general election fires up, President Biden is casting himself as a champion for women's health and his GOP rival Donald Trump as a threat to women's reproductive rights. For its part, the Trump campaign is still trying to clarify his ominous prediction this weekend if he loses the election. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. His campaign insisting he was referring to the auto industry, not political violence. In that same speech, Trump also calling some undocumented people, immigrants in America in animals. Cases, they're not people, in my opinion. The Biden campaign released a statement calling Trump's comments continued racist attacks against black and brown Americans. Former President Trump is expected to vote in Florida's presidential primary tomorrow, while President Biden campaigns in more battleground states this week, including Nevada and Arizona tomorrow. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. A good night's sleep. So many of us don't get that every night. 12 on your side takes a look at the products claiming they'll give you your eight hours every night. Do they work? Tears and raw emotion in the courtroom today as the family of a murdered barbershop employee confronts her killer before that man heads to prison. Plus, a teenager opens up about her suicidal thoughts that started during the pandemic. Her experience, one of so many, now prompted the creation of a brand new county and state program. It's educating both kids and parents to stop mental health spirals before they begin. Those stories and more coming up on the News at 6. If you're having trouble sleeping, you are certainly not alone. One in three of us not getting good quality sleep. But there are a lot of products out there claiming that with just one dose, you'll be dozing right off. Really? 12 Your Side's Marilyn Moritz looks at sleep supplements and drugs that promise sweet dreams. We've all been there. You have a rough night's sleep and the next day is no fun. The truth is not sleeping enough isn't just annoying. It can actually contribute to serious health problems, including diabetes, high blood pressure, weight gain, and depression. Many people turn to over-the-counter sleep drugs, but they can leave you feeling drowsy the next day. And prescription sleep meds, even the newer ones, come with additional risks. Some have also been linked to sleepwalking and other odd nighttime behaviors. So you should take the lowest dose for the shortest time possible. One option is CBD. It's shown to have mild side effects and is not addictive. Be sure it doesn't react with other medications, though. 
If you suffer from chronic insomnia, before you turn to CBD, it's actually time to make an appointment with your physician. He or she can help you with a more proven therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps focus on behaviors that can improve your sleep. And what about melatonin? Consumer Report says it might be a good option for people who work night shifts or are jet lagged. But taking more than what your body produces can cause you to be sleepy or mentally or physically slow the next day. Start off with a low dose and never take a dose higher than 10 milligrams. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside right now, 64 degrees, gray has been the color of the last few days. Welcome back. Adam. Hey, thank you. Good to be back. Good to be back. We were uh, off on spring break. I love it. A little trip together with the fam. It was a good time, but it's good to be back. And we came back to some good rainfall over the weekend. That was nice to see. We'll get into how much we saw uh, across our area in the rain gauge reports coming up at six o'clock. But let's look forward here. Cooler than average through Wednesday, back to 80 degrees by Thursday. Our next chance of rain comes Wednesday night, though I'm not all that optimistic. We'll see a whole lot. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's take a look at our temperature trend. Have a jacket or sweatshirt ready at the bus stop again tomorrow morning. 45 degrees, mid 40s to start the day tomorrow. And notice our morning temperature trend does rise and warm up a bit, but we're talking mid 50s by Thursday and not into the 60s for morning lows until early next week. Today we started at 55. The average low is 52. This afternoon, though, we only made it to 65, a 10 degree difference from the morning on into the afternoon, and that's well below our average of 74. Check out the record 95 set back in 2013. Texas, all of Texas feeling that cold front that moved through over the weekend. 59 in Midland, 61 in Abilene, 57 in Dallas right now, 63 in Del Rio. We have that north wind that's been pushing in the cooler temperatures yesterday and today. Not all that spring like out there at the moment. Bernie Stage Airfield right now at 59 degrees. That's one of the cooler locations on our map. Now tomorrow morning when we wake up, about 40 degrees, Bernie, Bulverde, and New Braunfels will be 42 in Converse, 44 at Stinson, 42 in Castroville. I think in and around most of San Antonio, about 46 degrees. Then by noon, we're only at 57. And check this out, 61 for the high temperature tomorrow. So if you thought this afternoon was cool, tomorrow afternoon is going to be even a few degrees cooler than what we had today. So this unseasonably cool air is going to stick around for a few more days. Floresville tomorrow afternoon 63, Converse 61, Kerrville 61. Notice we're in the low to mid 60s the next couple of days, Tuesday and Wednesday. By Thursday, it's back to 80 degrees. That's where we'll be on Friday as well and through the weekend. Highs well into the 70s, so some warmer temperatures are around the corner. A look at authority radar. We don't see a whole lot out there. We had a few showers earlier today, but not much to speak of now. Just a few spritzes and sprinkles possible, and that's about it for the next couple of hours. A lot of the uh, shower action that we saw today was actually evaporating before it hit the ground. But notice the swirl near Phoenix and Los Angeles. That's an upper level disturbance that's going to help to throw more energy our way and get a little support from another ripple of energy currently in the Pacific that's going to help to boost our rain chances a little bit by Wednesday night. Notice that stays to the north of us through Tuesday. Wednesday, a gray day. It's going to look like it could rain at any moment on Wednesday, but don't anticipate anything more than a sprinkle or two. Then Wednesday night into very early Thursday morning, widely separated to isolated showers. Even a few thunderstorms could pop up and there is the off chance of a stray severe storm, particularly in the hill country. Wednesday night into very early Thursday morning. Notice as of now, we only have that as a 30% chance. We don't have a whole lot of confidence for many of us or even most of us to see any of that rain. Temperature trend again back to 80 Thursday and Friday. We get into the weekend a little extra cloud cover by Palm Sunday, but overall pretty comfortable morning temperature near 60 afternoons. Well in the 70s. All right. Thank you, Adam. All my rowdy friends are back. Larry is back. <laughs> yeah, and, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Kasky back in action. All right. It seemed to me like Victor Wembanyama took some pent-up aggression out on Brooklyn. He yesterday. sure did. I mean, he wanted to leave Austin with two wins, but he at least wanted to leave with one victory. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Wimby was sensational with his fifth double-double in six games this month. I mean, he is just a highlight reel filling up 
that stat sheet. And the UTSA women's basketball team is getting ready to play in the WNIT coming up. Every win is important. I don't care if it's in Timbuktu. <laughs> Y'all playing there next year? Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> Portofino would be nice. <laughs> How about Paris? Well, we're going there. Yeah. Pop confirming that Wimby and the Spurs will play in Paris next season in big board sports. At some point next season, Victor Womanyama and the Spurs will show off their skills in Paris. But last night, the Spurs put on a show inside the Moody Center, beating the Brooklyn Nets 122 to 115 in overtime. Wimby had 33 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, and 7 blocks while collecting his 36 double double in 60 games played. He's the first player in NBA history with 30 plus points, 15 plus boards, 5 plus assists, and 5 plus blocks while shooting 50% in a game. Wimby feels his game is hitting another gear. There's always steps, you know. Looking back and looking like through the season, I can see our progression, but also my progression. And uh, even though it feels like little, it's little by little every game. You know, when you do it every day after a whole season, it, it adds up to, to something big. So this is yeah stuff I wouldn't have been able to do in the in the first game, you know, of the season. But it's you know I'm glad of the way. We got better. That alley oop was insane. Wimby and the Spurs will host the Dallas Mavericks tomorrow night at 7 at the Frost Bank Center. Postseason glory is still alive for the UTSA women's basketball team. For the first time since the 2008 09 season, the Roadrunners are in the postseason and will play in the WNIT after receiving an at large bid in its field of 48. This will be the Roadrunners' third trip to the postseason and first appearance in the Women's National Invitation Tournament. It means everything, honestly. It's just a testament to everybody in this gym right now. Uh, from last April to now, just putting in the work, um, grinding day in and day out, and honestly just not taking no for an answer. Um, after every loss, we've found a way to get better, and honestly after every win, we've also found things to hone in on and just to get us to this point. UTSA will host Northern Colorado on the first round Thursday night at 630 at the Convocation Center and the winner will play Wyoming and this is a big step for that UTSA women's basketball program. Absolutely. And by the way, when Wimby plays like he played last night, that just gives you like a sense of what he and this team could become. Absolutely. And just when you think you've seen it all, he does something else. You're like, wow. I mean, there were several times in that game last night. I was like, what did he just do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. Not so spring like the next two days. 61 tomorrow afternoon, 64 Wednesday, and a lot of gray in our sky, deceiving clouds. That'll look, make it look like it could rain at any moment, but really not much more than a sprinkle. Wednesday night into early Thursday, a 30% chance of a few showers. All right, and even a thunderstorm or two. Total solar eclipse, we are 21 days away. I know we're gearing up, and you are too. We'll be giving away glasses starting in a few weeks. We're ready. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is next.